Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Milo. Stop it, I'm recording a video. But hello, it is me. Tis I, Noah. If you're new here, hello, welcome to In Between the Lines, where we talk about anything and everything to do with books. I hope you're all doing well. You had a very good day, good night. What have you been doing? Did you have dinner? Was it good? Did you enjoy it? Really? Anyway, today we are here to talk about a book that I recently just read and pretty much this book has is on my mind. Now that I've finished it, it's... I need the next book. I need it. I need it so bad. But um, let's just kind of go into the little bits and details about it. So, Paradise One by David Wellington. Oh my god, I am obsessed with this book. It was such a good read. Such a good read. Uh, so this was published in 2022. It is 677 pages. 670. Jenny! <laughs> this book! Let me try this again. This book is 677 pages, but it does have a little extract for another book um, that he has released. That would make it 680-something pages. And a high off. Um, this is a horror sci-fi mystery, though the horror itself is more creepy factor than anything. But there are odd moments where it has strong imagery. And it's done so well, it's written so well. There's moments when um, I had to tell my friend Ben from Ben's Book Corner and Jenny, my girlfriend, and, and just... Uh, anyone who would listen about the creepy bits that happened in this that i was like this is what happened in the book and it played on my mind in loop for the past week that i've been reading it because it's so good but i can't tell you because i don't want to ruin it i need people to read this the main thing that i do need to tell you about this book it, more of a heads up is well yes it is a girthy book it's a bit of a wall banger book as i like to say the chapters are short and it does have multiple point of views but it is so fast paced, it doesn't matter. It's extremely fast paced. Some people may struggle with how fast paced it is, but as soon as you read the book, it, you are running for your fucking life. And because of that, it makes it very hard to lose attention. And you just want to figure things out as the characters in this book are experienced things. It's so good. Also, the main thing that I do need to give you a little bit heads up is the cliffhanger at the end. Yes, it is 670, nearly 700 pages, and there is a cliffhanger. There is a doozy of a cliffhanger at the end. And when I read that cliffhanger, I hated it because it was a cliffhanger because I wanted to know. But I have to wait till the 5th of November when the second book comes out. So not, I mean, it's so far away, but it's not as far away as it could have been. But I'm just going to read you the blurb. I'm not going to go too much into the story. So it says, Welcome to Paradise. Paradise One, Earth's first deep space colony for thousands of people. It was an opportunity for a new life until it went dark. No communication has been received from the colony for months. It forced a Firewatch agent... It forced a Firewatch agent, Alexandra Petrova and the crew of the Artemis to investigate why. What they find is more horrifying than they could have imagined. And it's very true, very, very true. So the, the thing that I love about this is that while it is a girthy book and it is extremely, like it's the most fast paced book I've ever read. And I didn't think I would like such a fast, pa fast paced book, but I do, I, I enjoyed this book. It is a small cast of characters, so they are easy to latch onto, like an octopus to the face. <laughs> So, just to talk about the small cast of the book, we have Alexandra Petrova, who is a Firewatch lieutenant. She's a very strong female character. In a way, I would say she suffers some, from some form of CPTSD, family, am I right? And also suffers from claustrophobia. I'm not going to delve in too much about things, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about things. I absolutely adore her as a character. She's strong when she needs to be strong. And sure, everyone has moments where they need to have a breakdown, but she, she's, she is a strong character. It doesn't rely on her past or anything like that. Like, yes, she had bad experiences, but it doesn't play onto that. That Like, that is why she is a strong character. So it's awesome. We have Sam Parker, who is a the pilot. 
um, he, I guess you could say he's the love interest, very loosely. It does not rely on that. It is not at the forefront. It's very much like there's a comment and that's kind of it. There's like other little comments throughout the book, but it's not the main thing. Um, he is very much the illogical thinker. And in a strange sense, very strange sense, he is pretty much an enigma. And this is why I'm like, we need the second book so I can figure this out. <laughs> uh, we have Lei Zhang. He is the doctor. He himself suffers from PTSD. Um, he has this really cool little like armlet that he has that is very much like a robotic symbiote. And he suffers from, I'm going to butcher this, haphophobia. Um, I think I said that right. Uh, which is the fear of being touched, which sucks because he is a doctor, but he does what he must. So, awesome. And then we have someone known as Rapscallion. I really enjoyed this character. He is not this robot symbiote for Zhang. Um, he is a robot who was then uh, applied to the ship that they are on. Uh, he 3D prints his own bodies and he pretty much has these fun vibes that when there are these really heavy moments, he breaks them up a little bit, which is really needed in certain things that happen in it, which I absolutely love. So that's literally pretty much like the, the cast. There are some side little characters that happen, but they're the main cast. And they are on uh, the ship known as the Artemis. Now, the main thing also is that there are multiple AIs in this artificial intelligence uh, in ships. And while they themselves are characters, there's really one main one for the ship Artemis, which they're on, who is known as Acteon. I may be butchering that. Which is funny because they show themselves as a white deer stag, I guess. I don't know. It, it, it's beautifully uh, detailed and I love that. There is this really cool scene with the deer. I'm not going to go into it, but when it happened, it gave me fucking chills. I loved it to bits. The main thing is, is that obviously while they are flying around, there's all these like different ships that they see and different AIs. One AI in there uh, makes a joke about how all the ships and the AIs are named after gods and goddesses and it just, it fits so well and then it also explains why they are named after them. It's just, I absolutely love this book. It It's brilliantly written. Now, of course, I can't go too much into it, which is why this is a very short review. But I would, I would rate this 4.5 stars out of 5. The main thing is, is that people I feel would struggle if they're not used to such a fast paced book. Is that. Uh, and also Cliffhanger. As such a chunky book you want there to be some sort of thing that kind of wraps it up. And then leaves it somewhat open for the next book. It doesn't have that. It is a cliffhanger. It's like the end of a series in a, in a fucking TV series. And it's literally much this is what's happened. And then BAM. Gotta wait till the next season. It's so frustrating people would i feel would definitely struggle with that there is a little bit towards the end this sounds like i'm putting a lot on there while it's highly rated for me um is that towards the end of the book there is like a change in pace while it's very fast paced it kind of has a moment where it stops for a second breaks are on and it's kind of like trying to like kind of thread some pieces together to be like cool this is something that that we somewhat wanted to know about but it still leaves all these other bits unknown about and for me I, it did make me stop for a second and be like oh everything's kind of slowed down for a quick second while everyone was so fast paced which is why i breezed through the book within like 10 days uh while working um but i feel like for others it, it, it could be a bit of a shock but it's extremely well written i loved everything i really like the characters in this book it's fantastic i can't wait for the 5th of november when the second one is out there's these certain discrepancies um not discrepancies certain descriptions that happen in the book to do with things that i found extremely creepy gave me shivers and chills and i thought wow that's really interesting and it's such a good take now i don't normally read sci-fi in general that i've got like one other book which is like the alien book up over there somewhere which is like a sci-fi horror because i love my horrors but this is sci-fi with a dash of horror and a dash of mystery just kind of thrown into the mix and I really enjoyed it. I could get into sci-fi very easily if I can find things more like this. And I, like I said before, I can't wait for the second book. Whew. I hope you 
enjoyed this video i would like to know what your thoughts are if you've read it or if it's something that you would read into i'm sorry i didn't go too much into the story main reason is because i do want you all to read this book it is on uh the kindle it is on audible while i don't listen to audible a lot um i think it would still be an interesting thing to hear at least but yeah thank you for watching i really appreciate it much love towards you all and stay awesome and amazing clearly and i will catch you at the next video side note is we are doing a reading sprint tonight at 10 p.m gmt and i hope to see you there stay awesome stay amazing and i will catch you be good make good decisions and love love